Hi everyone, Aaron here for Zolotech, and this is the Samsung Galaxy S23 Ultra. This comes in at $1,199 and goes up to $1,619. You now have a little bit better specs from the base model of 256 gigs of storage with 8 gigs of RAM or 512 or 1 terabyte options. 512 and 1 terabyte have 12 gigs of RAM. Now this comes in eight different colors. We have green, lavender, cream, and phantom black, and the new exclusive colors, one of them I have here, you have graphite, sky blue, lime, and this is red. Let's go ahead and unbox it. So let's bring in my unboxing knife. Also, we'll take a look at the S view wallet case a little bit later. Samsung typically gives you a bunch of credits when you pre-order. So I was able to get that for free and we'll do this here. Let's cut this side here as well. And put this away and let's take a look. So we'll take the top off here. This is my first time seeing this in person. And so here's the phone. Let's see what we have as far as the top of the box. So if we pull out the different things here, we have a USB-C to USB-C cable, and then we have a little quick start guide. Let's see if we have anything else. And it looks like we have a SIM card ejector tool, no case or anything like that, at least in the United States. Let me set this aside and here is the phone itself. So we'll take it out of, we'll take that top piece off and then we've got the phone itself and nothing else. So this is the red color, although this is an odd shade of red, almost a maybe a pink red, maybe a little bit of orange in it. It's hard to say. It's It looks very different on camera than it does in person, but let's go ahead and remove the front cover. There's nothing else in here. You just have that cable. Let's go ahead and take the screen cover off here. And there we go. So let's go ahead and go around the outside of the phone and take a look at it. So on the right hand side, and it looks like we've got more plastic all over it, protecting it. But on the right hand side, you can see we have our power sleep wake button, our volume button. Let me remove this plastic here. We'll take this off here. So it is a glossy or, well, actually, I guess it's a matte black. It looks glossy because of the sticker. On the bottom, we have our SIM card tray, our USB-C. We've got some microphones and a speaker as well as our S Pen. So the S Pen that comes with it apparently is black. Put that back in place. And then on this side, let's take this off here. We'll remove the wrapper on the right hand side, or I guess the left here. And so on the left hand side of the phone, there's nothing there. And then on the top, we have a little microphone and that's about it. Now, like I mentioned earlier, we have a SIM card tray on the bottom. Let's go ahead and remove that and take a closer look. As in different places around the world, you may have different options. In the United States, we have a single SIM card tray and we also have an internal eSIM as well. Now, one thing you may have already noticed is we no longer have a charger in the box. This is something that Samsung's continued with, but if you need a charger, that's where the official charging partner of Zolotech comes in, Anchor. This is the Anchor 313 charger. It's a 45 watt charger with super fast charging 2.0 that will charge your S23 Ultra in under an hour. The charger uses gallium nitride technology, which offers a higher efficiency, upgraded heat dissipation, and reduced size overall. It has multi-protect technology, which safeguards your Samsung Galaxy with 10 layers of protection from over voltage protection, current regulation, and over temperature protection as well. It has a foldable plug and is 30% smaller than Samsung's 45 watt charger. There's also another option if you only need 25 watts, and this is the Anchor 312 charger. It'll give you a peak charging for the S23, but not the S23 Ultra. It has all of the same features as the 313, at a lesser price and lesser charging speed. These are both compatible with all of your Samsung devices, Android devices, and Apple products as well. I'll link them in the description if you'd like to check them out. Now let's quickly talk about specs and then we'll compare this with the S22 Ultra. Internally, we have a Qualcomm Snapdragon 8 Gen 2 specifically made for the S23 Ultra. We have 12 gigabytes of RAM, like I mentioned before, and no more Exynos processor, no matter where you live around the world. We have a 5,000 milliamp hour battery that can fast charge at 45 watts at 65% in about 30 minutes or so. 
It has reverse wireless charging, as well as Wi-Fi 802.11, ABG, NAC, and 6E, along with Bluetooth 5.3. Of course, it has 5G, it has Gorilla Glass Victus 2, and has a dynamic AMOLED display at 6.8 inches or 3088 by 1440 pixels at 500 pixel per inch density, the same as the S22 Ultra. It has a 120 hertz display, HDR10+, and an under the display fingerprint sensor. It goes up to 1750 nits of peak brightness as well. When it comes to the cameras, they've changed a little bit this year. We have a 12 megapixel selfie camera with an f2.2 aperture. We again can record at 4K60. Then on the back of the phone, we have one major upgrade to one of the cameras, and that's an all new 200 megapixel camera f1.7. We also have a 12 megapixel f2.2 ultra wide, a 10 megapixel f2.4 telephoto three times optical zoom, and a 10 megapixel f4.9 telephoto 10 times optical zoom. We can also record in 8K up to 30 frames per second this time around. So that's something we couldn't do before. We only had 24 frames per second. It also has Android 13 with One UI 5.1, four years of software support, and IP68 at 1.5 meters for 30 minutes. Now to compare with last year's phone, you can see here they look very similar, except for maybe the cameras on the back. You have a little bit of a different ring around them, around the 200 megapixel camera in the middle there. This also feels different in that the edges are more squared off. So as you can see from the top down, we have more squared off edges than we did before. So it's a little bit different different layout and leads to a nicer feel in the hand. It's not as slippery and you can hang on to it easily. We also don't have quite as an aggressive curve around the outside of edge of the display like we did before. It's more of a flat display, which is something I think most people welcome. As far as everything else, well, they're very, very similar this way. So some of the antenna lines have changed a little bit, as you can see there on the top again, and then on the other side, you can see the button placement and everything else is quite similar. So not too many changes there. And then again on the bottom, let's take a look at that. You can see it's very similar pretty much other than maybe an additional microphone that we have here and everything else is very, very similar. So pretty much the same phone externally with some really nice adjustments to the overall feel and the way things are set up. So that's something I think most people will welcome. Now let's go ahead and boot this up for the first time. We'll get it set up and then we'll take a look at some of the settings and more. Then we'll take a look at this case as well. So it's turning on for the first time here. We'll give it just a moment. Nothing looks unusual here. It's booting up and it says welcome. And that was a nice fade in that we normally get with Samsung phones. We'll tap start and we'll have to agree to the terms. So you can see here, I agree. The others we don't necessarily have to agree to. You'll see here at the bottom, there we go, we'll agree to that one, but we don't have to agree to the diagnostic data. We can set up using another device or just skip that for now and jump right to the home screen. So we'll skip it for now and just get to the home screen and see what that's like. We'll connect to Wi-Fi. Next, it's looking if we have an eSIM or not. I don't have one of those set up yet. I'll transfer a different SIM card to it a little bit later. And now it asks me to select my service provider. I'll skip this for now, but if you wanted to install an eSIM, you could. We'll skip. And it says getting your phone ready. This may take a few minutes. Now it's asking me if I want to copy apps and data. I won't do that now. I'll do that a little bit later when I get everything set up for personal use. I just want to see what we have as far as options and more right now. So it says checking info. We'll wait for this. And now we'll need to sign in with Google. After you've signed in, we can set up fingerprints. We'll do that. We'll hit continue. And first we'll put in a pin. Now we'll register our fingerprint here. And I've done this many times. This seems a little bit slower than doing this, even on the fingerprint sensors on the flip and fold. So we'll give it a moment here, get it set up. There we go. And we could add another finger. I'll do that later. Maybe add my left thumb. And then it says getting iPhone ready. And now we can sign into our Samsung account if we want to. After you've agreed to your terms, tap agree. And now we can choose your display preference. So we can go with light mode or dark mode. Let's go with dark for now. We'll hit next. And it says you're all set up. Go ahead and we'll hit finish. And let's see what we've got. So we have the typical Samsung sound. Of course, I'll change that later. And the background's pretty dark. So let's see what we have for wallpaper here. 
We'll change it. See what we've got for wallpapers and styles, change wallpaper. And these are pretty simple this year. I liked the ones last year a little bit more, but you see how simple these are. We could go with, oh, and it just said enrollment complete and it rebooted on its own. So that's something I hadn't seen before. I guess it's going to reboot now. So we'll give that a moment. And I can't turn it back on. So Let's see if we can get it to boot back up. There we go. I just had to give it a moment. So it rebooted on its own. It didn't tell me that it needed to do that. And I had some odd things when setting up the S22 Ultra the first time. It sort of was slow and locked up, but it was processing in the background. Hopefully this phone stays nice and fast though over time. So now we're back up. We'll tap for weather info. We'll agree. Should find where I'm located. And there we go. And the background is really dark for my liking. So let's go ahead and change that. Like I said, we've got some different graphical ones, some different colors. And eh, I think I liked the last year's better. Like I said before, before this rebooted, I guess we'll just leave it for now. It does have an unlock animation here. So if we put our thumb down or just turn it on here, you'll see the backgrounds moving a little bit. Now, as far as display settings, let's go ahead and go into those. See what we've got here. Most people are saying battery life on this is good enough that we can just bump the display up to the fastest or highest resolution and fastest speeds. So screen resolution by default is at 1080. Let's switch it to 1440. And then of course we have motion smoothness. It's adaptive or we can have standard. So I'll leave it on adaptive. I want 120 Hertz and let's see what we've got as far as pre-installed apps. So this is super smooth by the way. And if we go in, you'll see, we have our typical Samsung apps pre-installed. Go back. We also have our Microsoft apps pre-installed Google apps. And of course, Facebook, something I also like to get rid of typically and it does let me uninstall it. So we can do that. And it looks pretty much like the S22 as far as this part goes. Now, one of the big upgrades is supposed to be the camera. Let's go ahead and take a look at that. So if we go into the camera, the camera should have better video for the rear camera. So if we take a look here, we have up to 8K30 that you can see there. So 8K30 at the very top, that's always nice to have. And apparently it's usable. However, I haven't tried it out. If we do photo here, we'll bring in the S22 and maybe the pixel next to it just to see what those look like. And we'll snap a photo and I'll just put it in the video here so you can see it too, see what it looks like. It's nice and fast. Shutter lag seems to be there, but very quick, but it's definitely there. And as far as the camera on the front, well, it should be an update and we should have better night photography and more. I'll have to test all of this. Now let's go into the forward facing camera. I already put it to 4K60, as you can see there. That's what this video is recorded at. And let's go ahead and hit record and see what it looks like and sounds like. So this is the forward facing camera of the S23 Ultra. You can hear the microphone. I haven't changed the audio. I've just adjusted the overall level so that it's correct according to what this video is like. But let me know what you think about it, whether it looks good or sounds good. I'd love to hear from you in the comments below. And so that's the overall camera. I can't wait to use this a little bit more. Some of those zoom shots seem pretty impressive, but whether or not it's overlaying the moon over some of the zoom shots is hard to say. I really want to try that out and just see if it's enhancing that with graphics or if that's actually what it's getting from the camera. So we'll try that in the future, but I will have to use this for a little while. The phone is getting a little bit warm as it's installing updates. That's to be expected, but it should have some improved cooling and efficiency and battery life should be much better. Let's go ahead and take a look at the overall version. So we'll go down to, well, software updates. Let's see if there's any here. We'll give it a moment to check and see if there's any worth installing or anything that we need to install. And it says it's up to date with the January 1st, 2023 patch. If we go back and I do need to change this to gestures. I prefer those under software information. You can see we're on one UI version 5.1 with Android 13. And then it has the November 1st, 2022 Google play system update. So some of those things may need to be updated right now. That's what's here. Just updating the phone right when I pulled it out of the box. So we're checking it right after pulling it out of the box. So it looks pretty good. The screen looks great, just like any other galaxy, but it definitely feels better to hang on to when you're using it. Just it's a little bit easier with the squared off edges. Now let's go ahead and take a look at the S view wallet case. So let's see what we have here. looks like we'll need to cut these edges here. 
So we'll do that. Put that away. And let's take a look at the case itself. Now I've used these cases in the past on other phones as well, other galaxies. And these boxes are always a little challenging to open. I guess we'll just rip it there and see what we've got. So like I said, with different credits and things, you can get these typically included with the phone. Not always, but sometimes if you pre-order it. And we have a little wallet spot here in the case itself. So that's nice. We can put a little credit card here or ID, and then you have the case. Now inside the case, it's got some microfiber on the back, but nothing on the sides. This is sort of a rubbery texture. And then the buttons, they feel pretty nice, but I do think they're plastic. I think last year they were metal. I actually have last year's case right here. Maybe it's just painted plastic, but you can see that here. And if you have last year's case, let's just see if it fits, even though they're slightly different. And it doesn't seem like it's going to fit properly. So last year's case doesn't look like it's going to fit and it definitely doesn't with the cameras. And this feels like silicone and it's kind of a rubbery grippy feel, which is nice. Let's go ahead and place the phone in there. So we'll place the phone in, we'll close it and it recognizes it immediately. And then of course we have the clock and it is interactive as well, just like before, which is to be expected. I do like the feel of this better than the, the last year's version I had. This is kind of a, less grippy version. So it feels a little different this year, which is nice. It fits around the cameras nicely, seems to protect those. Okay. You've got a little bit of protection that's raised a bit and the buttons are good. You can feel those no problem. And then of course, unlock the phone and we close it, reopen it and it wakes back up. So that's always nice to have. This is a flip case. If we flip it around, we don't really have great clearance for all the cameras. You could probably use the top two. You could use the main 200 megapixel camera, but you don't have great clearance if you want to use it, just holding it like this, but you could do that or let this sort of just hang there. And so there's not much more to talk about as far as the S 23 ultra. I definitely like this. I wish the red color was maybe a little bit more red, but in general, it looks pretty good. Let me know what you think about the S 23 ultra in the comments below. I'd love to hear from you there. And if you've picked one up, I'd love to hear what you think about it. If you've already used one for a little bit so far, it seems to be great. And if you want more comparisons, I'd love to hear from you again in the comments below. Of course, be sure to check out anchor. They'll be linked in the description as they normally are. And of course I'll try and link this wallpaper in the description as well. So these are a little bit dark in dark mode, but I'll link them there if I can find them. If you haven't subscribed already though, please subscribe. And if you enjoyed the video, please give it a like as always. Thanks for watching. This is Aaron. I'll see you next time.